Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back. Today we're making chess, a game as old as time. I completely suck at chess, and I thought maybe I could get better at the game if I build it myself. So in today's one day build, I'm gonna take you through the process of modeling, uh, building and coding up a complete chess game in Godot. As usual, I completely underestimated the project, and this is definitely not a one day job. And later on in the video I'll explain to you why it all went wrong, but it was still a very fun project to do, even with the time constraints. And maybe if you intend to build a chess game yourself in Godot, you can learn from my mistakes. But before we get into today's video, I'd like to introduce you to the best way to learn online. Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform that makes acquiring knowledge fun and intuitive. With their interactive lessons, Brilliant takes a different approach to learning, by tackling real-world problems in a visual and interesting way. Studies show that this method is six times more effective than passive learning, so you'll see results faster. Brilliant isn't about memorization. They focus on building critical thinking skills through problem solving. As you tackle challenges, you'll learn to approach problems creatively and break them down into manageable steps. We all know learning is important, but finding the time can be tough. Brilliant makes it easy to fit learning into your busy schedule. Their bite-sized lessons help you gain valuable knowledge in just a few minutes a day. The perfect antidote to mindless scrolling, turning your daily commute or coffee break into a productive learning session. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash lucky or click the link in the description. You also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. That's brilliant.org slash lucky. Alright, let's start at the beginning. I always like to start my projects with the visuals, that way I have something to look at when I'm coding. And molding a chess set is actually a super fun process. I highly recommend it for a beginner to intermediate 3D artist. Most of it is just uh, shaping cylinders, so you're just extruding cylinders and getting them into the shape of the pieces. But every piece requires its own little technique. For example, for the castle you need to create these little things on top, I'm not sure what they're called. And for the bishop you need to create a cutout in the top, which I did with a boolean. And then for the horse you actually have to model the horse, because it's not a cylinder. And the queen and the king are quite simple. The queen is basically just a very fancy castle with a ball on top. And the king is almost the same, only instead of a ball on top you create this little cross. After building out all the pieces, I went onto polyhaven.com and got myself some flooring textures. These are just hardwood floors, but they work really nice for chess sets because they're basically just uh, varnished wood. I did go a little overboard with the textures, I think I downloaded them all at 2k, making the chess set model over 100 megabytes, which is annoying because GitHub doesn't allow sizes bigger than 100 megabytes. But if anybody wants just a chess set model, uh, I'll throw it up on Sketchfab and leave a link in the description. So chess set model done. Uh, the board was super simple as well, just a bunch of cubes in an array modifier making an 8x8 and using those same wood textures only colored slightly different. The models are by no means perfect, they're very high poly and there is some sloppy topology here and there, but it will work. These are the only models shown in the game so it doesn't matter if they're not super optimized, especially for a one day project. Alright, fine, let's hop in Godot and start coding. When creating a game, you always gotta choose your method. And especially with modern game engines, there are multiple ways to make the same thing. I thought about it a little bit, and the best way to probably do this was uh, component-based, making a piece component and then deriving every single piece from that base component, and then setting up a board manager that takes care of all these pieces, and then a manager for a turn, which can be a white turn or a black turn, switching in between, uh, making the player control the game. But this is a one day build and I'm lucky, so I decided against it and did my favorite method. Habibi, this is where the real game is. Which is doing everything in one script. This is the magic game manager script. It takes care of input, taking turns, board management, piece management, uh, everything this game has to offer. Checking for checks, checking for checkmates. Everything in this chess game is written in this one GD script. It's a terrible method, don't do this, but I don't know, for a one day build. Let's talk about the logic of chess from a programmer's perspective. The game management part is actually really simple. It's just one turn only the white pieces can move and the other turn only the black pieces can move. And if a turn results in checking yourself, uh, revert that turn and give the turn back to the player who was playing. But finding out where a specific piece is allowed to move on a given turn is actually quite interesting. There are three flavors of pieces. Uh, the pawns are their own thing because they can sometimes move diagonally but only when they can take a piece. 
otherwise they can just move one step forward or if they're on their starting position they can take two steps so they're their own set of logic then you have what i like to call in code stamp pieces uh, that's the king and the knight and they have just a given set of positions that they can move to only checking if that is out of the board or there's a piece of your own color there then you can move there otherwise these positions are just open to move and the last set of pieces are the bishop the rook and the queen and these pieces are what i like to call ray casters because they should raise in diagonals or straight lines checking if those spaces are free and if those rays end with an enemy piece then you can also move to that enemy piece and take it and if it ends with your own piece or the end of the board uh, the ray just ends there so i ended up writing three pieces of logic for the pawns uh, the stem pieces and the ray casters and then checking for checks was really easy i could just loop over every piece that you had uh, check if any of the moves will result in the position of the enemy king and if that is true you're currently checking your opponent all right so now that i had the basic logic of chess implemented it was time to uh, implement the last two rules and this is actually where the problems arose so there are two more rules in chess uh, it's called castling it's when your king and your rook uh, haven't moved yet and there's space in between and none of those spaces where the king would move are in check you can uh, switch them around and move them to a central position and the second rule is called en passant it's when a pawn has just moved its two spaces so from its starting position if it is now next to an enemy pawn it can take that pawn by moving behind it so without actually moving to its spot but the spot behind it uh, it can still take it but when trying to implement these rules i realized that chess is not linear uh, some rules, like the castling and the en passant, are based on previous positions. So you need to know the previous positions of the pieces and how they moved in order to implement these rules. So for example, if your king moved somewhere during the game and moved back to its original spot, it can no longer castle. And the same with en passant, if the pawn moved two spaces, like three turns behind, you can no longer en passant. So when you walk into a chess club and you look at a board and you have no idea how the game went, you cannot actually know every move. It depends on what the last move was and if the castles or the king moved. And this is when I finally did some research into how chess games are programmed. Uh, I should have done this of course when starting the project, but I like to go into this project blind and see where I end up, what the problems are. But yeah, real chess games are not programmed like mine, where it's just a state of a board. I'm just keeping track of where the pieces are at this given moment, but in uh, a proper chess game, you're just keeping track of the movement of pieces. So it's almost like crypto where it's just a ledger you're just keeping track of every single move that has been done and then you let your program solve that to get the state of the board and this way you can easily check back into that ledger into that move list if a king has moved if the last move was a pawn move and that way you can easily know if you're still allowed to castle and if you can go en passant i could hack this into my project and just have a couple of booleans like keeping track of can still castle or can currently en passant but I think it will be a more fun challenge to actually uh, implement this move list and have just a solver for the board. Because this game could actually be a very fun first multiplayer game. I really want to get into multiplayer and chess is a very easy one because you're just sending moves to each other. You're not actually having a heavy real time updating of the world. So I think that will be another fun one day build, implementing a little multiplayer server. I'll probably just do some Node.js server uh, and have two clients send back and forth moves in that move list. And that's where the day ended. It was a fun one day build. I actually highly recommend this to beginners. Uh, there are a lot of fun programming challenges. Uh, the modeling is very fun. And while there are some challenges in the project, I think it's great for beginners because uh, they're very easily Googleable. Uh, you're definitely not the first person to make a chess game, but it's still quite challenging. So yeah, if you're a beginning game dev, uh, definitely try making yourself a chess game. And that's where I'll leave you guys. Uh, be sure to give this video a like and hit subscribe if you like what you see. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one, and until then, bye.